What's up, everyone? It's Dom Trimboli here from Refinancer. <clears throat> so just about half an hour ago, we heard the big news that the RBA has increased the cash rate by another 50 basis points, all the way to 1.35%. So um, this video is just going to give you guys a bit of an idea of how we can perceive this and the knock-on effects and everything like that. Um, so pretty much it's gone up by 50, which means if you have a current variable rate or any current variable rate on the market, the overwhelmingly likely scenario is that will go up by 50 as well. So if your home, home loan rate is 3%, it's probably going to be 3.5%. And that doesn't matter which bank you're with. And if you're looking to, let's say, refinance to someone, something that was 2.7%, well, that's going to be 3.2%. It doesn't actually change. like It doesn't make another lender better than anything else because everyone is moving together. Um, and of course, if you're lucky to be in a fixed rate, then that's you know even more distance between what you're fixed at and what the market is doing. But the um, you know eventually you're going to come off that fixed rate, and you know it's going to be a completely different market then. So let's have a read. So the RBA increased by 50 basis points today, um, the third month in a row. So we had um, 25 in May, 50 in June, and another 50 in July. Um, yeah, so obviously moving pretty quickly. And um, it was pretty, it was expected. It was either going to be 25 or 50. Um, 50 is probably what most people thought. So it shouldn't come as too much of a shock. Um, and, you know, down here, it's got some pretty decent um, repayment advice as to what, you know, what's going to happen, especially if your rate has changed. Um, and, you know, even just looking at a, a loan calculator here, we can see the we can see the knock-on effect and, and it is pretty significant, you know, so let's say you had a $500,000 mortgage. Um, if your rate was, let's say 3% and you pay, let's say monthly, you know, $2,108 a month and 3.5, it's now $2,245 a month. So, you know, that's about what $140 a month extra, which is pretty significant. What's that? Like 35 bucks a week. So it's all, it's all adding up. Um, and I guess the biggest question, well, there's two questions. The first one being, what will happen from here? Will rates continue to go up? Um, and I think it's pretty likely they will, especially with what we're hearing. Um, and the second question is, like, what should you do? Does this change anything? Um, and the big kind of question is, is it variable or fixed that you should be looking at? Um, and I'll give you kind of my thoughts and just outlay some information, which might help. Um, so I guess the first thing to consider is... Um, CBA, I think it was last week, increased their two-year fixed rate to 5.79%. Um, so that's pretty massive. Like these two-year fixed rates were below 2% like a year and a bit ago. Like I remember CBA being at 1.99. I think the lowest we ever saw was 1.79 on a two-year fixed. So that's gone up by like, well, almost like 4%, which is nuts. Um, so, two, so to fix for two years at 5.79%, or you can probably get a little bit lower with other, other lenders as well. Um, you know, the question is, does that make sense right now? So I guess the next thing we'd have to understand is what's the market variable rate. Um, now going up Westpac, which are a great option at the moment, they've got a variable, which is 2.74. You can also get this down to 2.64 um, if you have a 70% LVR, which means, you know, you've got about 30% of equity in your property. This is going to go up, so we might as well consider this 3.14%. Um, so, you know, I guess when you consider 3.14, which is the current variable, versus 5.7, there's still a bit of distance. Um, now, let's, I guess there's predictions, right? So initially in the year, we were hearing that 1.75% was going to be the increase. So the rates were, the cash rate was 0.1%. Um, and 1.75 was how much they expected it to increase by, which meant the cash rate should be sitting at 1.85. Um, most credible sources have started to really, um, they've um, changed their prediction of that. So um, now we've got a lot of people saying the cash rate might hit a peak of 2.5%. Um, and it's not crazy to think that that's the case because they were predicting 1.85% and now they're predicting 2.5%. And, and look, the biggest thing to understand is 10 months ago, they were pre 10 months ago, they were considering 1.85%. So not a lot has changed in 10 months. Just people are starting to really take note of this now that it's actually happening and affecting them. Um, you know, going back November, October last year, we were really making our clients aware of, you know, fixed rates are going to go up, but it was really hard to actually paint that picture because everyone's kind of got used to 2% thinking, you know, 
it's always going to be 2%. We even have a lot of people saying, what if it goes down? Um, and of course, being so low, it was more than likely it was going to go up given everything that's happening with property going up and, and everything like that. So to now think 2.5% is the expected peak of the cash rate, it's not radically different from 1.85%, which was the prediction nine months ago. Um, so what I've done is I've made a bit of a spreadsheet to really kind of put light to it. And look, my spreadsheet, <laughs> I'm not the best with spreadsheets, but this really drives home the point. So this is kind of what to know. So if you were looking to refinance, what's the best deal you can get? Now, as of an hour ago, you'd be looking at about 2.64% on a variable rate. And you can even get 4,000 cash back. And that has to be understood. You can't say things like, oh, I don't care about the cash back. I only care about the rate. Well, you can't look at things like that because the cash back is money and a lower rate is saving money. So it's all, it's all the same thing. Um, so now, obviously, with the 50 basis points, we have to expect that to go up to 3.14%. Um, and you know the 4,000 cash back will remain. So looking at the CBA fixed option, um, I don't really think they're going to go up as a result of this RBA increase. So we can probably say the market fixed rate is around 5.79 to two um, and with a $2,000 cash back. Um, so I guess the distance before today was 3.15%. Okay. The new distance is 2.65%. So it's kind of like saying, if you were to go on a two-year fixed rate tomorrow, um, you'd be looking at 5.79, but if you stayed variable, you could pretty much get 3.14. So as you can see, a lot of difference, a lot of distance between the variable and the fixed rate, even after this announcement. Um, and going at the prediction, which we we're just discussing. So before we we're looking at a prediction of 1.75% increase, right? Um, so far we've experienced 1.25%. So we've had the 25% in May, and the 50 in June and the 50 in July. So this is live, we've had 1.25. So based on the predictions nine months ago, we're still, we still need to get another 50 going. Um, now let's adjust for the new predictions. So the mid-year predicted increase, so um, you know 2.4%, well, they're saying it's gonna to get to 2.5%, so that would be an additional 2.4. Um, and we've already had 1.25. So it means we're still going to expect another 1.15. So I guess the first thing to consider is, you know, there's a distance of 2.65. If the initial predictions were correct, we've got 0.5 to go, which is nowhere near the 2.65. And even if the adjusted prediction is correct at, you know, another 1.15, we've still got, you know, considerable amount to kind of get there. And to be honest, even if it gets there, it, it will take time. So like as an example, you know, if we looked at four quarters, like quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four, or so on, you know, if your variable rate's 3.14 here, and then it goes up by, let's say 50 to 3.64, then it goes up by another 50 to 3 point, oh, sorry, 4.14, then even another one to 4 point, I don't know, 6.4, 4.64, sorry. Um, and if you lock in 5.79 here, you know, you're kind of locking that in straight away. And you're going to be kind of losing a lot of money here. There's a lot of distance here, a lot of distance here. And even as the gap closes, you know, and the question is how long will it take for that gap to close? So I guess the point I'm, I'm driving home here is yes, rates have gone up. Um, and yes, variable rates will go up, but it's the fixed rates are still, there's still so much distance in between. Um, and I guess you've got to ask yourself about the, you know, what, what's happened in the past, right? So we recently had the variable rates, um, well, really the interest rates were going down over the last four or five years. And it got to the point when we're about 1.79%, which was the, the lowest. And, you know, a lot of people were saying it could go lower, a lot of people, I think, citing the Netherlands, I think, had negative interest rates um, and saying, oh, what if Australia does that? And it was like, well, how much lower could rates have gone? So if we went to, you know, there was like, there's much more distance it can go up than down. So when rates were dropping, I think most people were thinking, look, there's only really one way to go and that was up, which is what's happening now. 
Um, so I guess like, there was a bit of an overreaction, right? And a lot of the news, a lot of the hype, um, when people start seeing the rates going lower, they start to get, you know, hyped up thinking, oh, this is the way it's going to be. It's going to continue to go like this. It's human nature. Um, alternatively, let's look at what's happening now. So rates are increasing um, and people are going to start to feel it. And it's going to put a lot of families under a lot of pressure because 50 basis points is a lot. Like, with, you know, an extra $35 a week to families is going to be a massive effect. Like we, we can't underplay that. It's going to be a massive change, a massive adjustment. But because we're experiencing that, does it mean rates are going to get to like 6 to 8%? You know, will we get there? And that's what we've got to think about. Like if we're going to get to rates that are this high, then you could maybe consider something like this now, maybe. But if the ceiling is going to be like 5 or 6%, then you know, we can kind of, um, we're calling it ride the wave, right? You can ride the wave up to that point, but don't kind of get hit now. And that's, um, there's no real right or wrong answer. So it's something for you guys to really consider. Um, and that's probably my biggest takeaway from, from all of this. Like, yes, the rates have gone up. Yes, it's happened three months in a row. Um, but what are your options? Your options can be stay put with your current lender and do nothing. Um, that's probably, you know, maybe not the best option because it's likely you are already on too high of an interest rate. Um, refinancing to the lowest variable rate, you know, could be a great option because you're pretty much securing the biggest discount loaded into your interest rate. And, you know, if you can get 4,000 for doing so, why not? Um, you could even review your home loan in 12 months. And that's what we do with our clients. I will review your home loan every 12 months. If it makes sense for you to switch banks and save more money, then we're going to help facilitate that. And the other thing you can do is, I guess, fix now, uh, you know, a rate around this. And of course, there's two-year rate, two-year fixed rates, a little bit lower than this as well. But the effect here is you're kind of, you know, you're playing it safe. You're playing it really safe. It's like you're not even getting in the water here. You just want to fix. Don't worry about it. Set and forget. And, you know, I guess if there is crazy stuff like this happening, then it's not a bad move. But you've got to consider that. Is this fueled by mostly hype and news and, you know, just... A lot, of, a lot of craziness. And my, my thoughts generally are when you hear, you know, this level of prediction, I think they tend to be hyped up. Um, and, you know, I think really this kind, these kind of predictions here are where it's at at the moment. You can't say for sure, but, you know, with what we're hearing, this seems to be, um, you know, the most accurate prediction, I would say. So that's pretty much it, guys. 50 basis points today. Will, is it going to keep going up in future months? Yes, we need to expect that. Is it going to have a massive effect on families? Absolutely. You know, this is an extra 35 bucks a week on average to the average mortgage or so. And it's going to keep getting like that. Um, you know, yes, um, property owners would have made a lot of money on their house values in the last couple of years, really. You might have experienced 10 to 15% increases. But, you know, even then, it doesn't mean you're going to have that cash. Although there's equity in your property, it doesn't necessarily mean you have that cash on hand. Um, that could be another reason to refinance, just to free up some money. Um, because ultimately, if you're sitting on a property that's worth a million dollars with a loan of 300000 but you're going to struggle to make these extra $35 a week repayments, it's, it's kind of senseless to, to consider yourself, you know, to put yourself in that position. Because if you just increase your loan a little bit to have some cash on hand, you can cover that. Like it's not about money in the bank. It's about your total asset position. Um, so that's what I'm telling a lot of my clients now, especially as well, just to kind of consider their entire asset position as their wealth, not just the money in the bank, because that's the reality of their, of their position. So there it is, guys. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to comment, um, like the video, subscribe. Um, we're looking to do lots of these videos just to kind of help people make sense of the craziness at the moment. And your support really helps, um, gives us, you know, if people are viewing this, it really gives us the um, motivation to keep making more and more of these videos. And if you feel like having a chat to one of our brokers, you know, it's only a 10 to 15 minute chat and we can go through pretty much this whole thing, but tailored towards your personal situation. And that chat does not cost anything, um, whether or not you go through for a refinance or do anything, it's kind of just good to know what's happening. Um, so all the best guys and um, enjoy. Bye.